This is episode 44 of the Just Ask Joey podcast. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Just ask Joey. Joey. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Just Ask Joey. I'm your host, Joey. This is the only place on the internet where a former idiot answers your questions to help you either avoid idiocy or get over idiocy. And before I get started on today's topic, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to start doing interviews on this. So it'll kind of expand my range of information that I can give you guys. So if you guys have a story, since this whole podcast and vlog and everything is all about avoiding idiocy or getting over idiocy, if you guys have a story that you think would help even one other person out there someplace in internet land, please contact me either through the, the, the comments in the sections below or hit me up on one of these guys, either Twitter or Snapchat, and let's connect. We can do like a little short kind of run through, kind of see what you th- how you feel that your issue could help somebody else. And if I think you're right, let's do it. And it'll be a, uh, a Skype interview and it'll go directly up on here. And then I will take that interview and create a, a blog out of it to help even more people. So if you're interested, please contact me. Um, I would love to start sharing other people's stories also. Even if it's similar to something that I can share, I think it's the more voices, the better. And the more voices out there for people to connect to, the better because the more help they feel they can get. So there's that. Okay, so today's topic is uh, about discipline. And I'm not talking like parents spanking your kids, grounding them. I'm talking about like personal discipline. I'm talking about routines, structure, all the things that sound freaking terrible to anybody I'm assuming under 25, but probably under 40. And I'm no different at all. I have, I don't know if you guys know this or not, I have ADHD. And the idea of any kind of confining sounds awful. But what I realized is that one, confining is not awful, which is the point of the rest of this whole vlog and podcast. But one thing that I realized is that If you don't like what it is that you're doing, like for work or in life, or you don't have a goal, or you don't have like an end game, or you don't have a long vision, why the hell would you want more structure and more discipline around what you're doing? Why would you, you don't want to do what you don't like better. You know, if I hate something, I don't need to make it better. I need to just do what I'm doing collect my paycheck, go home and do what I really like doing. So I think the first thing you guys need to really look at is do you like where you're headed? Because if you don't like where you're headed or if you don't like your job, it's going to totally mess you up because this whole rest of this podcast, you're not going to want to do any of this stuff because why would you want to get better at stuff you hate? So first thing, get into a situation where you actually like doing what you're doing and then apply all this stuff, okay? Okay. So I'm going to break this down into a couple key points, but the idea basically is when you wake up every day without discipline and without structure, you're going to reinvent the wheel every single day, or you're going to do kind of like what I used to do when I first started writing and was like writing music and all this stuff. You just kind of wait for inspiration. You don't have to do that. Now, I know like the artistic side of me is like, oh, I just want to be inspired and see a freaking bird and blah, 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 whatever and be able to write a song and this. Forget all that crap. That's the kind of stuff that's going to get you in a situation where you're, you're doing like 10% of what you could actually be doing. If you structure your day correctly, if you have routines, what you do is you, you pick out exactly what it is that's going to build you up to that position where you can be productive or be creative or be whatever it is, whatever it is that you want to be, 
have things in place so it's almost like stairs. You're just stepping right up to, boom, productivity. It's going to leave you at the doorstep. You just got to walk your ass through the door, all right? So not reinventing the wheel means you have to, you're going to start really, really big. And there's a book called The Art of Learning, which is freaking amazing. And I and I highly recommend it to everybody. The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin. And he talks about this thing called making smaller circles. And what that means is you start out like this big. So your routines are here. And then as you get better at building up to this, your core spot where you're going to be productive and creative and just kicking ass and crushing it, you take, you can whittle it down until you need just a little bit of it. So when I first started, my daily routine was really freaking long. It was meditation. It was coffee. It was running. It was doing warm-up writing exercises. It was doing like Italian language lessons and that's a whole other story but it was all these things built up so then when I sat down it was like I was kicking ass but it was like a good like on a good day it's like a good like hour and a half process way too much so what I'm able to do over time and granted this is like a 24 month time period what I'm able to do is pull things out so I don't have to run before I work I don't have to, I don't do like warm up writing lessons. I don't do language lessons and stuff before to get like my brain flowing. I get up, I drink coffee, I meditate and I work. That's best practices, but I don't need the meditation in order to work, but I do the meditation because I know it's better for me throughout the whole day, throughout the week, throughout the month, all that stuff. Meditation, beautiful. If you are not meditating, one, I highly recommend it. I listen to a lot of very successful people on podcasts in many different fields and like 90% of them meditate. So if you don't know where the hell to start with meditating, I recommend two apps, either Calm or Headspace. For me, I listen to podcasts by Tara Brock and I download her guided meditations. That way I can pick out depending on how much time I have, like I shoot for 20 minutes, but if I only have 15, I can pick out a 15 minute one. If I got 25, blah, you, you get the point. Whatever, just start meditating and do it every single day because it's, it's you, build, you build up the effects of meditation. Meditation allows you to increase attention, increase productivity, it reduces anxiety, all, blah, all that stuff. It does all kinds of good stuff. And it also uh, slows down the brain aging process, which is good, especially if you're a little older. You take the routine, it starts out big, and it whittles down smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, I can get up. If I have to, there's certain days, like yesterday. Man, yesterday, I was just slammed from the second I got up. So I get up at 5 in the morning, and instead of taking 25, 30 minutes to do the coffee and the meditation thing, I got up, and boom, 5.01, I was cranking on work. And I can do that because my circles have gotten smaller and smaller to the point because my ending point for my morning routine is to sit down in my creative space, which is which is here. And you can't, actually, you know what? You wanna see it? I don't know how it's gonna look. But so I have, I set up, you can see the CD cases and guitars and everything behind me, but I set up my space so it's really good for me. So behind my computer, I have all these goals and people and all kinds of crap and just stuff that, I mean, France and Grammys and iPods and James Altucher and Tony Bourdain and James Hetfield and different cities and all kinds of stuff. Got the whole, you can't really see, you got the family thing down here. So, and I'm, I apologize for you guys that are listening to this and not watching it because that was just 10 seconds of crap. So, sorry about that. But the idea is like, is, is this is my workspace. This is, this is the final spot in my in my preparation for the day. So I've whittled it down enough and I've done it long enough that I can just sit down and it is freaking game time. That's kind of what you, that's whittling down the circle. So my circle started out here. It started out like 90 minutes and whittled it down to one minute. And that's kind of what you're trying to do. So step one is you need to set up kind of like that end point. You need to set up your environment. Now, you create the environment you want that you like, that stimulates, and then your environment gives that back to you. So that's why I have all the stuff that I have up. I want, I like just crap around me. Like I like stimulating stuff. I like looking up and going, I'm going to do that one day. I'm going to do this one day. I'm going to meet that guy one day. 
I like looking back and having stuff I love, like music behind me. There's just, it's set up so it's functional. I have a whole thing of stuff over here that I can just grab. I have all my lighting stuff, all the camera stuff. Everything's right here. Everything's very functional. So set up your workspace that works for you the best. And you control that. So figure it out. Now, you're going to have to audit. And this is for each thing, you're going to be auditing everything. So when things aren't, don't look right or don't feel right in your workspace, change them. Now, this is not something you're not going to sit down and be like, this is exactly how it's going to work because you're going to go what I think is going to work and then what's actually going to work in all of these steps. So for the workspace, figure out what works for you. Remember, when something is too distracting, get it the hell out of there. Get it out. That's what you're auditing. You're auditing what works, what doesn't, eliminate all the stuff that doesn't work, put in the stuff that does work, and pretty soon you're a freaking machine. Why? Because discipline equals freedom. Whoop, whoop. Step two, morning routines. It's kind of what I was talking about before. So you set up, you got to start your day out strong. You can't wait for the end of the day to get going. Or you can't wait for the end of the day to get going. So set up exactly what your morning routines are to get you to you sit down, whatever your work time is, whatever start time is for you. And I suggest getting up and get going the earlier, the better which means you get a good night's sleep. And that's like the very, that's a very important part of this. You have to get good sleep. You have to take care of yourself and get up, eat something healthy. Don't do the sugar. Get all the sugar stuff out of there. Get all the fake sugar stuff out of there. Sugar is a good energy source, but it's a cheap energy source. So you it'll pick up your energy, but it's going to crash within a couple hours and sugar makes you fat. And then you're crashed and you're fat and then you're going to be depressed and then you're not going to want to work. Avoid the sugar. Avoid the fake sugar. Fake sugar tricks your body into thinking that it's real sugar and it ends up doing all the things that you don't want sugar to do to your body anyways, like storing fat and, and, and um, decreasing insulin sensitivity. All those things you don't want it to do. On top of that, it messes up all your good bacteria and gut flora in your stomach, which means you're not digesting properly, which means you're not releasing endorphins into your system, which are the happy hormones, because endorphins are released in your intestines, I think, or colon, something down, something down there in the booty region. And if your stomach's not working right and your digestive system's not working right, you're not going to release those things, and that's going to make you sad also. So come on, just clean up the, clean up the diet, water, coffee, Healthy, uh, healthy you know, eggs, vegetables, healthy oils, stuff like that. Healthy stuff. No sugar, please. So you figure out your day routine. You remember, you're going to be smaller circles. So it may start out big. It may start out like take a really long time, but you're going to slowly whittle it down. So don't be, don't be put off if it's like a 60 minute thing because it'll it'll come down. Trust me. Um, the rest of your day routine. So basically, how you work from when you start to when you finish. What's distracting? How can you take breaks without completely throwing your momentum off? How can you, what can you eliminate to keep you less distracted? What types of distractions can you have that don't throw you totally off? Like for me, I got to get my cell phone out of here. It's not in here at all, is it? No, it's in the other room, see? Because as much as I need social media and emails and contacts and everything, to do 50% of my job, the other 50, if I don't do the first 50%, which is actually create the content, it doesn't matter who the hell I'm contacting on the other end. So you have to prioritize your stuff. So as much as I love being on the, on the phone and, and tweeting people and, and uh, distributing content and making contacts and checking with clients and all that stuff, if I do that, I'm not gonna get the content done. And the content is where my money content is king right context is where i make all my money so get that stuff out of there um have things in place like i have lifting weights in place towards the end of the day so it's either going to be the cap to my day because i've finished everything which is not all that often or it's a fantastic break to give me a little recharge and a little break and get the blood flowing and everything to kind of work my body the way my mind's been working all day for the last few hours of work before i go to bed so just things in place that help you kind of glide through the day. And it's, it's, it's mostly about removing the things that don't work. 
removing the distractions, removing the the things that bring you down towards the end of the day, removing things like removing the foods that make you feel like crap later, stuff like that, like stuff like that really counts because you want to be 100% for your whole workday and, and auditing and pulling things out that don't work is exactly how you do that. So as this as this is going through, like I said, you're constantly refining everything. So you're constantly going to refine your workspace. You're constantly going to refine your morning routine. You're constantly going to refine your your daily routine, your daily habits, your things that allow you to like just kick ass all day. And the more and more tight the routines get, the more constrictive they get, the more discipline you have, the more you're going to do. And all of a sudden you'd be like, holy crap, I've been wasting so much time by running around and and doing things this way and doing things that way when when all I needed was structure. And I prom- it sounds crazy, especially you guys out there with like ADHD and stuff like me. It sounds nuts. But when things just are the way they are and you can build yourself up pretty much at will to be at 90% capacity, 95% capacity and really be able to crank, you can do it every single day. And remember, this is not going to work if you hate what you do. If you hate what you do, you need to change what you do because this, you're not going to want to do this for something that you hate. So maybe you need some like some adjustments in your life first, okay? Now this is going to take time. Don't get don't get dissuaded by things taking maybe longer than you feel or you're not on fire like week one. Like this is like, take a few weeks, take a month, really like write down at first what you think is going to be the best things, what things you know don't work, pull those things out first, and then just take time to like mold and develop your day. Because the more discipline you have, the more structure you have, the more routines that you have, the more you're going to be able to create, the more you're going to be productive, the more you're going to be just awesome at what you do. But you have to give yourself the time to do it. And you have to be honest with yourself about things that are working and not working. Okay. So if you guys have any other questions about this, please hit me up, Snapchat, Twitter. And again, if you are interested in doing a podcast with me, where I interview you about the situations that you've had to go through that you think could help somebody else. And if you're questioning if your issue could help somebody else, the answer is hell yes, it can. Because whatever issue you've gone through, you're only one person. There are billions of people in the world. There are other people out there that have gone through the same thing you have or similar enough that your victory story can help be their victory story. Remember that. Your issues can help not only yourself, but it can help other people. And please share your story with other people. It'll help you and it'll help them. Okay? I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. And she was like, huh? and he was like, nah. and we was like, what?